Um, hey, April, look at you there in your scrubs. Thank you for being on the front lines and taking care of us. Awesome, really so glad that you're able to join us. All right, so um, my name's Jackie Woodside. I'm a, a, a coach and a coach trainer. I train coaches in uh, my life design curriculum and my curriculum for conscious living. I am an author and uh, an all around good gal. Um, how's that? The That's founder great. of the curriculum awesome. for conscious living. I love it. Uh, um, I'm a mom, I'm a spouse. Uh, I am a person who is living through the first pandemic in 102 years, <laughs> right? How cool is that? Um, so, uh, so obviously you all know me well enough to have seen this, uh, you know, little message about us getting together today for solutions and solidarity and you wanted to come spend some time with me, but I, um, there are, um, a few of my coaches, uh, our coaches from the life design coach community also that I invited onto the call with me today. And I'd like to introduce them. Uh, Dina Crawford is up there. Dina, hey, El Gallo, uh, also one of the life design coaches, Muna Sharaf is in the middle of my screen, Amanda Coburn is on here. Wow, look at all of us. Lynette Culverhouse is on here. Teeter Craig is one of our life design coaches. So, oh, and April Spooner is a life design coach in training. Oh, hi, Maria. Nice to see you down there. So there, is an, there are a number of other coaches and teachers that, um, oh, Tim Mangini. Thank you. Sorry, Tim, missed you there. Uh, so it's enough of us and I'm obviously missing my coaches. Um, so it's, you know, not just me, but I really want this to be a community dialogue of uh, how we as a community of like-minded people seeking to elevate and lift one another up uh, are, um, are gathered together today. So um, I don't have any real structure for this day because I did want it to be an opportunity for for people who want to talk about how to how to survive and thrive, you know, what solutions and solidarity, how to survive and thrive during this time. So I thought I would just make some opening remarks uh, about the time that we find ourselves in uh, to begin with, that I will make some opening remarks and then I will invite people to ask questions uh, or to, to share what it is. You know, the, oh, so the context of this call, let me back up just a little bit. So I've, uh, I have a newsletter that I distribute out, an email newsletter that I send out blogs and, and you know, thought, just various articles that I write most often, sometimes videos, different things I send out. And so last week I sent out a, a, an email to my list with just this one question, what's your biggest concern right now? And the amount of answers, the amount of people that responded to me was, was stunning. And the amount, the diversity of what I saw in what people sent to me was, was equally stunning. So what that told me is that there are a lot of people that are kind of seeking solutions or, or wanting solutions or uh, wanting some place to, to, to go and think proactively about what it is that we're experiencing together. Mm -hmm. So I, I, there were so many people that responded to me that there was no way I could go through and answer each and every one of them. So I said, well, I'll just invite everybody for us to get together. Because if one person has this issue, chances are other people have it as well. So, um, so that's the context of the call today. So think about what it is that you want to uh, go ahead and ask and, and myself and other coaches will address what you're what you're thinking, what your con cares and concerns are. Now, um, I just want to say a little bit about my perspective on what's happening and what we're going through right now. Um, at, you know, as I kind of jokingly said, I'm a person who's you know get, going through the first pandemic that we've had in 102 years, um, as all of us are. And my so first of all, I'm you know as all of us on this call, I feel incredibly blessed to have a career that allows me to still work to have health and well-being, having a home that I can go home to, uh, a home that I can go home to that is safe and not dangerous for me, um, that I have plenty of food in my cabinets and, you know, a family that loves me. And I know that many people do not have that privilege right now. So while I feel enormous compassion for what is happening, and compassion literally means to feel with. Compassion means to feel with. Uh, I'm sorry, to, to feel for uh, compassion with, as opposed to empathy, which has you kind of going into the same vibratory pattern as the person who's having that emotion. So 
And I'm, I'm really clear that what I want to stay in is the energy of compassion. That compassion really is a, a heart-centered emotion that leaves my energy, my vibe intact. I am still me and you are still you and I have compassion for and with you as opposed to I'm being taken over or taken up with uh, the grief, the fear that you, or anxiety that you are experiencing. And I think that's an important perspective for those of us that are really committed to helping raise the vibe on the planet through these uncertain times that you feel for and that you are, you know, there and you're wanting to be with people, but that you maintain your own sense of well-being, wellness, and vibratory pattern. The best thing that you can do right now is protect your energy. So, you know, we were, uh, as the, just a, a few of us were getting on, somebody, I don't remember who, but someone who knows me well, was like, hey, Jackie, how are you? And I was like, awesome, you know, I'm happy. And then somebody else joked and was like, hmm, you know, is it okay to be happy right now? So that was all kind of a tongue in cheek conversation, but I want to address that because I do think it's one of the questions that some of us have. And my answer to that is, it's not only okay to be happy now, the best and most important thing that you can do right now is maintain a vibratory pattern of, you know, a high vibe, let's say a high vibe pattern of love, happiness, well being, uh, uh, equanimity, uh, a sense of presence in the face, yes, even in the face of this. So to say, like, oh, you know, how are you? Like, oh, I'm ha you know, actually, I'm happy <laughs> um, <laughs> is really okay. Now, it, you, you may need to be judicious. You know, I wouldn't say that to someone uh, who's just lost a loved one or has just been sent to the hospital or, you know, of course you want to be appropriate and judicious. What I'm talking about is not aren't social conventions. What I'm talking about is the best thing that we can do for the planet right now. We are going through a tremendous time of upheaval and upheaval means growth. So our biggest and best contribution to this time is yes, feel your feelings. So maybe you get on this call like, geez, this is the last thing I wanted to hear. What do you mean I'm supposed to be happy in the face of this? <laughs> okay, I get it. You know, so your first job is just feel your feelings, man. Feel whatever's there. Have that experience, have that expression. So if you're worried, if you're frightened, if you're, you know, if you're losing sleep at night, if you're sad, if you're lonely, if, you know, a number of my really good friends live alone and, uh, and, and are starting to, you know, the first couple of weeks, like, ah, this is great. I love being alone. And now it's like, okay. <laughs> Like enough already. I'm ready to have some people around me again. You know, so wherever you're at, it's fine. I'm not judging any of it. Feel what you feel because when you allow yourself to feel what you feel, do you know what happens? It dissipates. Mm -hmm. When you just allow yourself to feel what you feel without judging it, without, you know, I always say to my life design students, my life design coaches, don't go low consciousness on your life, low consciousness self. There's like, oh God, I'm like so anxious and what's going to happen in the economy and my job and you know, what, what's going to happen here? So there's that whole experience of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? But then what you don't want to do in the experience of, oh my gosh, I'm worried, what's going to happen? Is be like, oh, you're not supposed to be worried. <laughs> Stop worrying about things. No, shut up. If you're worried, worry. <laughs> you know, just don't be lived by that worry. Be like, oh wow, there's worry. Like there's concern showing up. Hey, Denise, glad you're here. Hey. Um, so, so, you know, that's what I, just what I want to say by way of contextualizing this. Wherever you are at right now in this experience, just be there. <laughs> just have that experience. If it's, you know, worry, fear, loneliness, have that experience and then let it move through you. As you let it move through you, see what else emerges. And in a time like this, so uh, these are two separate thoughts. So hold thought one. At a, you know, so you may have to just feel the anxiety, the fear, the uncertainty, the pissed off, like <laughs> wherever you are, whatever you are, have that experience. And second new thought, at a time like this, spontaneous happiness and peace of mind may not naturally emerge unless you are a fairly you know, transformed and transcendent person, which I know some of you on this line are you may not have just like spontaneous, like wake up in the morning, like happy. So there's, there's something in science that science tells us that I love teaching people 
that you can learn to generate happy or well, uh, happy, mm, well-being feelings. It's called self-generated positive emotion. Uh -huh. So at times like this, if you let the anxiety, if you let the anger, if you let the loneliness have its place in you and don't judge it, like, oh God, you're not supposed to be lonely. You're supposed to be happy. Like, shut up, just laugh, like have whatever feeling you're having. Let that go through. And then if you're conscious enough, you know, how do I want to be, how do I want to have this experience? How do I want to have this experience of a pandemic? <laughs> That's never happened before in the last 102 years. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And then, like, and I don't know, maybe your answer is like, I'm going to be peaceful. Awesome. Then generate peace. How do you do that? By, you fo by focusing like right here, right now. Just bring your hand to your heart center. Like, okay, right here, right now, I'm okay. Right here, right now, I can be peaceful. Maybe your answer is, I, I want to contribute. I, I want to make a difference. <sighs> awesome. There's a million ways to do that right now. There's a good website I want to tell you about. It's called whileathome.org. They've got a tons of ways that you can volunteer, donate, you know, do things. Whileathome.org. So whatever, whatever your answer is, once you've allowed that lower vibratory energy to move through you, right? You've not denied it. You've not made yourself wrong for it. You've just allowed yourself to have the concern of the, the care, the upset. Okay, good. Now you ask yourself, how do I want to have this experience? Who do I want to be? How do I want to show up for myself? Because some of you are living alone in this. You're alone 24 seven. Well, it doesn't matter. Like our ego gets so attached to like how I have to show up for the world question here is how do I want to show up for me and my family? You know, I live with my spouse and a, uh, I was going to say a child. He's not a child. I live with my spouse and a teenager. <laughs> oh, God, give me strength. How do I want to experience myself as a mother with a quarantine stay at home <laughs> near 15 year old, right? So it's, that's just it. That's the question. To be asking yourself all the time. And then, you know, if you can't generate that emotion, that's what this call is for. If you just like, of course, well, like, no kidding, Jackie, of course I want to feel clear and positive and contributing and I want to feel all those things and I feel like shit. <laughs> Got it. Let's have that conversation now. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Do you know what that makes you? You know, so whoever is out there having that experience, do you know what that makes you? It makes you a human being. Period. the end. That's it. End of judgment. End of anything. You're just a human being, man. This is like, this is like unprecedented. Like, what is this? Like, who said that? This was not on my vision board. Thank you very much. <laughs> this was not on my three to five year plan. Nope. Right? I'm, and I'm super intentional about the way I live my life. This was not part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. Uh, all right. I'm having fun. So I will close my, op I will close my opening remarks. It's an interesting sentence. And I just want to, you know, uh, the goal here is just for us to be together, um, connection and solidarity. So if you want to share a thought, if you want to ask a question, um, and, and, oh, so the other, the other piece of context here, sorry, I said I was going to shut up and then I keep talking. Don't you, aren't you glad you're not married to me? Um, so the last piece of context I want to say is that I really believe absolutely hands down that there is no problem, no concern, no care that you can bring to me that I cannot give you a coaching structure to address. The only question is, will you apply the coaching structure? Uh -huh. Okay. So no matter what it is, like, bring it on, baby. I wonder if any of you will stump me and be like, oh, I got nothing for that. <laughs> I'll tag in my coaches. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Really, I'm done that time. So, um, I, can't, so I can't see everyone on the screen because there's 33 people on the screen and I can only see like 20 people at a time or 25 people at a time. So if you, um, if you raise your hand, that's great. If you raise your hand and raise your hand and I'm not calling on you, it's because you're not on my screen right now. So just there's a under manage participants on your menu. I think there's a way to raise your hand. Uh, it's like, I don't mean raise your physical hand. There's a function called raise hand. So if, um, if you're waving and waving and I'm not answering, it's because I can't see you. And there's a handful yeah, of you or, uh, yeah, hold on. There's a handful of you that are on the phone. So um, you can just speak up because I don't think, I don't know, but I don't think, I don't know if you have the raise hand function. All right. Who was that? That was Wendy. I just wanted to say that in the if you click on participants, I think that's where you find the raise your hand. Yes, manage participants. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So, 
Who can wants I to dive in? That um, you mute everyone, uh, and then they can just unmute themselves, or you unmute them when it's their turn because it's distracting with the background noise and it's switching screen. Okay. Is it? I actually thought it was pretty quiet. Is, is it too distracting? A lot of people are muted. All right. I'll mute everybody. Uh, mute all. Continue. All right. So now you for sure have to. Uh, raise your hand uh, in either physically or use the raise hand function because I won't be able to hear you either. So go ahead. Who's on? This is the part where you talk back to me, <laughs> which was, by the way, the whole point of the call. <laughs> I know, like, I'm so wildly entertaining that you just want to sit and have me entertain you. I'm not doing that any longer. All right, Dina, go ahead. I'm just going to say that I'm open to the possibility that this actually was in my vision because part of my vision is to um, continue to grow spiritually. And this is certainly the greatest opportunity. Yeah. I've in a yeah. while. So I'm willing to say that in an unconscious way, it really was on my, in my vision. I and like that. I like that. See what Dean is doing is taking a situation where we apparently feel like we've lost control, right? Where, where we feel like we have no control in this situation. And instead of going, you know, kind of going crazy with like, oh my gosh, I'm, I don't have any control here. Instead of that, moving into, oh, you know, like actually, I, I'm, I must have created this in some way. So it, that's a beautiful reframe and way of, you know, and, you know, this word control has a, kind of a mixed bag with it. And so instead of control, what I would say is Dina is asserting her agency. We all want to have agency over our life, our ability to have say over how our lives go. And that's exactly what Dina just did by creating that beautiful reframe. I once put on one of my, um, my uh, goals for the year to grow five lifetimes in one year. <laughs> that was a hell of a year. It was amazing. It was amazing. I, you know, I encourage you to all kind of take that on. And maybe this is the year that that, you know, sometimes your vision has a lag because your energy has to raise to meet it. So maybe this is the year that's coming to fruition. All right, Tim, uh, I will, if you could unmute yourself. Great. Yeah, I just, um, Adina's thought just reminded me of part of the teaching, which is um, really um, looking at life as being for me, as happening for me and not to me. Yeah. Right. And like, and that's just a great place to be like, um, and it can be hard because think things that are coming at us come at us in an, a really unfamiliar way right now. Um, but if we, if we push it through the lens of this is happening for me, let's look how it, it can often lead us to different ways of looking at it and ways to, to kind of find a place where it fits for us and, and yeah. where our life is going. It's awesome. So Tim, when you said part of the teaching, what teaching were you referring to? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really referring to the, to the life design course yeah. um, awesome. and some of the teaching that, that, yeah. uh, that, we've that, done. that we do together. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's one of the fundamental philosophies of, uh, of life design is that life isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. And that we, the more we embrace that, the more self-empowered we become and it creates a vibratory pattern for our lives. That is, I say, living in the realm of miracles. Uh, Maria and somebody else has their hand raised. Uh, Peter. Okay, so Maria first and then Peter. Hi. And Maria, yeah, I don't see you. There you are. I was going to say, I don't see you on the screen. Go ahead, Maria. It's nice to there see you. I'm glad you got on. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm glad too. Well, I just came from a stressful event. I went grocery shopping for the first time in two weeks. <laughs> Against my children's wishes, they keep saying, Mark, you can have it delivered. But I said, no, I can't find what I want looking online. I, I have to see it right there. Okay. So anyway, how I'm looking at the positive of this, I've been meaning to move into a townhouse that I own for at least a couple of years now. But I said, until I get rid of half the stuff that I have in this house, I am not moving. <laughs> so I have been throwing out papers. Yeah. You know, if you called me 20 years ago and said, Maria, can you show me this house? And I wrote on a little piece of paper like this. I still have that paper. Wow. So I've been decluttering. I have a long way to go, but I've made a lot of progress. Awesome. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I, I, Maria, I would just relook at grocery shopping, right? Uh, it can be a stressful event or it can be like, wow, I had my big outing for the <laughs> for these two weeks. And, uh, and you're such a beautiful, light, shining person. I can imagine that you raised the vibe for every person that was there. 
So it's your opportunity to go oh, out and be. With our faces covered, it's not even. <laughs> I know they still feel your vibe, girl. Like I, that's what I know. Peter, you're gonna hop in. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Um, so I think that if we're well, first of all, there's a huge diversity in how this is impacting people, and in the ways people respond to it. Yeah. And. It's all over the map. It depends on what level of consciousness they're at and what's happening in their family and all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, some of us, uh, speaking for myself, are in a very fortunate position and we're asking ourselves, well, what can I do to help? Yeah. Um, and I think for those of us who are in that position, uh, the first thing to do uh, would be look at your mission statement. Who are you? And that, that should give you a good clue about what your role in this would be. Yeah. And, and if you don't have one, it's one of the, one of the primary, uh, one, one of the steps that we do in life design is help you declare who it is that you came here to be uh, in, in no uncertain terms. So yeah, come, I, and Peter, it's interesting you said that because I was just doing a leadership call um, and I do kind of life design for organizations in my leadership work. And, um, and, I, and what I said to them, in this call, and I think it's important for this call as well, is what's changed here is like the context of how we do life is changed, right? So the overall context of how we're experiencing life and how we're living our lives has drastically changed. What doesn't change though is who you are. And in life design, we talk about an intentionally designed context, intentionally designing and declaring who I am, what I value, where I'm going with my life and how I'm going to get there. And uh, so your context for, for all of us of what you value, who you are, that in the face of this pandemic has not changed. You are still you. And the more you can ground yourself in the truth of who you are and your values and your mission and the way that you want your life to unfold. Now, there's some things we can't control right now about how we want our lives to unfold. This isn't a great time to go you know, on a Broadway show in New York, right? If that's on your vision, you're not gonna be doing that now. But what can you activate? You know, Dina, I love what you said. You know, I really had a commitment to growing spiritually and this is showing up this way. Exactly right. There are so many things. So the focus here has to be on, okay, I can't control these things. Here's what I can have agency. Here's where I can be proactive. It's really, really awesome, Peter. Thank you for bringing that in. Cindy? Hi, could you pause the recording? Yes, thank you for asking. Let me admit this person into the waiting room. Thank you for remembering that. Um, for those of you who got on after I resume recording. Great, Holly, go ahead. Thanks, Jackie. So uh, I'm really gr grateful that you're having this because I look forward to everything I can get outside of work because um, I live by myself and I'm an extreme extrovert. <laughs> it's been really hard to be by myself and not have the hugs in that. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I had a breakup, as you know, in the beginning of February, and I had just recently got back in touch with, with her, and we were sort of like um, hanging out a little bit, and um, then, then it was just brought up to me that uh, she needs to have a longer separation, and so I don't have that. So that like came back into my life for a little bit, and then it disappeared. On, so Monday, when I got home from work, I just cried like all night long, and I, I was just so lonely. And um, I've been trying to for the last couple of weeks. I've been trying to post positive messages like every day. I post a positive message on my new cover. I new, I do a new cover pit photo with a positive affirmation because I'm trying to be the light. I know that's what I'm here for, and that's I'm trying to follow my. Um, my mission statement of yep. eliminating others. Yeah, Holly, can I just interrupt you there? Yeah. Okay, so, and you know, I just love who you are and your commitment to positivity and um, just your heart. You're just such a beautiful being. So I just wanna give you a hug. So I, I don't know, I, I believe in energy. So mm, just give you a big squeeze. Thanks. Yeah, so here's the thing. You never have to try to shine the light. You never have to try to be your mission statement. Your mission statement is who you are. Your light is who you are. All of that other stuff is what's the hard part. <laughs> you know, your, your light and your essence are your natural expression. So 
And it's the efforting that we get very confused about. So if you could just step back just for a second, you know, and all of the trying and all of the I should and all of the I have to or that's what I'm here for, <sighs> just be. And if that means you're sad because something, you know, isn't going the way you wanted it to go right now, just be sad. It's all right. You don't have to shine the light when you're sad. Screw the light when you're sad. <laughs> be sad when you're sad. Just be sad when you're sad. Sad is sad. Sad is okay when you're sad. Sad's not okay when you're not sad. <laughs> but when you're sad, sad's okay. Just, <sighs> and then shine your light. If there's light to be shown. Okay. There's no light to be shown. Of course there is. You are filled with light. It's all that's, you know, oh, I should be and I and that. Just stop trying. Just be sad when you're sad. Be happy when you're happy. And shine your light when you're shining your light. Because your light's going to shine anyway. That's who you are. Even when you're sad. You're right. Anything else? Anything else? I, I cut you off mid-story, so I don't, I don't want to, like, you know. To just end the story I did um, yesterday, I was like, what am I going to post? I'm not going to post anything because I don't have anything. <laughs> so, That's just it, right? Just so stop all I, that business. I looked up to the sky because it was lunchtime and I was outside and I looked up to the sky and there was a heart cloud, a yeah. perfect heart cloud. <laughs> and so yeah. I had something to post. And, you and always have what you need. Nancy came through to me, so I was able to post something for Nancy in honor Nancy. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Nancy is a person who that I was just referring to, one of the one of my students who passed over the last six years, a dear friend of Holly's, and how we met. Yeah, Holly and I met in a hospice room over someone's deathbed. Like that's how we met. <laughs> We've been friends ever since. Uh, I'm yes, grateful. Forever grateful. I love you, Jenny. Forever grateful for Nancy for that. Exactly right. It's so funny. We had a lot of good laughs those couple of days together, um, and a lot of cries too as well. Um, anybody else want to, um, uh, oh, Lynette, I saw that you had your hand raised. I did. Um, well, you know, I actually love this time of year. Um, I'm a gardener and it's spring and I'm in isolation and I don't get to go out. I get to stay in my garden and, uh, um, you know, as an introvert, that really suits me. Um, so, you know, I'm appreciative of, um, you know, part of my mission statement is sowing seeds um, of unity, peace, love, and justice, but sowing seeds because it's an image of the garden. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I love to do is grow things. Yeah. So um, I feel in a way like I'm totally in the flow of who I am yeah. right now yeah. and not distracted by a sense of, um, you know, responsibilities or things I think I should be doing outside of the home or mm -hmm. aside from actually, you know, sowing seeds yeah and, yeah and it's been it's been um interesting to watch the creative ways that um people are sowing seeds too mm -hmm. um and finding ways to connect with each other and yeah so i'm i'm enjoying actually yeah. being an observer and um lynette you're not only just a uh, you, you don't just grow things you grow people as well uh, Lynette is one of our life design coaches that works with uh, teens and youth and uh, she read a mission statement from a 12 year old or th this week or I read a mission statement that she with, from a 12 year old that she worked with this week that was just blew my doors off so if any of you have uh, young adults teens Lynette's your your gal it was amazing thank you Lynette and uh, yeah I'm glad you're enjoying this time of quiet and, and solitude. Yeah, there's there's a way that the all of the outside doingness being stripped away leaves so much more room for us to really look at our beingness. Who are you being? And I just want to keep coming back to this question. How do you want to have this experience? How do you want to have this experience? Who do you want to be? How do you want to create this for yourself? And I, I really trust and believe that if you ask that question 
in the silence, you'll be guided intuitively to know if there's anything you need to do, right? I mean, of course there's things you want to do. Some of you are still working. I know I'm working uh, as, as much, if not more than I ever have been in, in you know, my usual work. And it's great, I mean, I'm having a ball. So some of you are still working. Some of you are retired and not working um, and being home alone with you know, days on end is a lot harder. And I've got a, a good friend of mine who just recently retired. Um, I don't, Maureen, I don't know if you're on the call or not. She said she was going to hop on. I can't, there are some phone numbers on here that I can't see the person. But anyway, a good friend of mine just re uh, retired, and she lives alone. And uh, a lot of her social life is you know, very active. We play basketball together. Um, and so now like, she's just literally a few weeks out of having like, a full-time job and that whole thing and all of her social network. And like, she's got nothing. <laughs> She's so funny. She uh, recreated Stonehenge with wine cork bottles this week. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're really pulling in straws here, girlfriend. <laughs> creativity. The creativity of the human spirit. All right. Who else wants to, wants to share anything or ask a question? Yeah, Mona? Was that uh, the hand raise? I kind of I kinda do. Yeah, um, go for it. So I'm having a very different experience. Well, I'm having my experience, and it is of that of great loss because I had to shut my company down and lay off. You did have to people. shut down your company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's so much unknown and so much. Um, yeah, really. It's, I mean, I'm, I, what I'm trying to do is stay in the unknown, the worry. Cause it is, that's all that's, that's what's showing up for me is worry unknown. Um, a little bit of despair and still be present. I mean, I know you saw my picture. I'm doing, many activities that I wouldn't normally do. Um, and I'm enjoying them, actually. I'm enjoying them quite thoroughly, to be honest with you. And, I mean, I just keep going in and out. And I didn't know if it was just a, a practice of, okay, this is all happening. Everything that's coming up for you is real. It's normal to feel worried right now. It's more normal to yep. feel devastation right now. Yep. And, and this is, I just, I don't know, I get hijacked a lot. And what are you going to do in the moment? Yep, exactly right. So, um, so Muna, I, I so appreciate your self-awareness, right? Because without your ability to observe what was going on for you, you would just, you would do what most Americans do. You would numb out with alcohol or online shopping or Netflix or, you know, going out for obsessive runs or whatever. Most people just, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to think that. I don't want to. No, you're just like, oh, wow, there it is again. I'm anxious. Wow, I'm really, my whole business just got shut down. Wow, I just had to lay off everybody in my company. What the heck? Is Boston Stoneworks ever going to open again? Like, I'm sure all of that is there. And, and you've had that company for a long time. You built a beautiful reputation. You're so successful with your company. I so admire the work you've done. So look, girlfriend, if you didn't have all that going on, I mean, I'd, I don't know, what would you be, a sociopath? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so of course like so yeah just that's exactly what I meant earlier in the call like so you're we're all gonna have these waves you know of, of and I, and I lo also loved what you said I think you said I'm having a very different experience and then you caught yourself and you're like no I'm just having my experience and that is exactly it you know there there's the there's the pandemic and then there's six billion people's experience of the pandemic mm. now Here's the thing that I want you guys to really get. It would be an easy pitfall, an easy cognitive error to think that the six million people's experience of the pandemic is because of the external. It's not. There's one external, there's a pandemic. Now, yes, I know there's a lot of variables. Like you had to shut down a company and Cindy lost her stepmom and you know, and I'm sitting here like, yeah, you know, I'm still working and I got food in the fridge and my spouse is upstairs. And it's like, so there's different experiences, but there's, there's just, there's the pandemic and then there's our experience of it. So, and I don't mean by experience, I don't mean the outer experience. I mean, your inner experience. Similarly, if you look at, and again, this is a little bit of a rough example, but, but bear, bear with me. If you look at the Holocaust, Millions of people lost their lives. Millions, hundreds of thousands, millions of, of uh, Jewish people and others were incarcerated. So there was that experience. And then there's your own individual expression of it. Based on your ability to observe and alter your inner dialogue and experience. Your inner knowing that you are not the body. 
two of the authors that have most impacted me are, you know, people who I kind of consider mystics who survived the Holocaust, well, one survived and one perished, but uh, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, I'm sure all of you know that. And the other one most of you don't know is uh, an author named Eddie, E-T-T-Y, Hillisum, who wrote The Diaries of an Interrupted Life. And she was in the Holocaust, perished at Auschwitz, uh, not Auschwitz, one of the other prison camps. Anyway, but her writings about that time was all about her own inner freedom to love, to cherish life uh, and to create her own way. So Muna, that's what I wanna leave you with. Yes, it's an uncertain time. Yes, you had to lay off these people. Yes, you've worked so hard to build this amazing company. And now it's like, oh crap, you know, what's this all for? It's not for anything other than what we say. My first week of this, um, all my classes, I do a lot of leadership work and all my classes were canceled because I do a lot of work at a university and some of my coaching clients canceled because they were you know, dealing with kids or whatever. And so I had like a whole week of like, gosh, I don't know what to do with myself. And I had a lot of time on my hands. And what came up for me was feeling um, irrelevant. It's like, I'm just not relevant. My spouse is yeah. like, she's a chief of staff to the president at a university. So she was up to here and you know, everybody was like, you know, scrambling and doing things. And I was just like, and I, so that's where I went in consciousness. Like my work doesn't matter. I'm irrelevant. And I thought, well, I can stay with that. So that was the feeling that emerged, right? So map this onto your experience, guys. Don't be like, oh, Jackie, that's interesting. No, <laughs> map it onto your experience. So the feeling that emerged was um, I'm irrelevant. My work doesn't matter. So I could stay with that and you could see where that would lead down a pretty dark, deep, spiral into irrelevance or depression or whatever. And I said, okay, well, I could choose to empower that thought or I could choose to empower the thought that actually I get a lot of good feedback about my work and people tell me that it really makes a difference in their lives and it really helps. So instead of going down the tunnel of irrelevance, I decided to empower the thought and feeling that my work matters. And so I wrote an article I made a video, I came up with an infographic, I sent it out to all my leadership students, I put it up on the Vibe Tribe, right? So I got active in creating a response rather than being taken by my story. So I know on some level, Mona, that you know that, that the work is to be living that, right? So there's what's happening, and then there's what you're making it mean. So the, the fact, the fact and perception, the fact is that you had to shut your company down for now. The perception is either, oh my gosh, that my company is ruined or wow, this is an amazing time to rethink how I'm doing business or whatever. Like you, you get to create the perception. The fact is the fact, we get to create the perception. Awesome, thank you. I'm sure that was beneficial for every. How many of you can map onto what Moon and I just talked about? Like you see yourself in that, right? Where you've got X happening, and then you've got to determine who am I going to be in relation to X? And you know, for Cindy having lost her stepmom, Muna having to close down a business that's really growing and successful, you know, for some of us, it's bigger things. For me, it was like, oh gee, I have a week on my hands that I get to feel irrelevant. It's like, shut up. Like, get a real problem, right? I mean, so <laughs> Kristen Farrell, I see you laughing at that. I, I just have to say, you are one of the people that I really admire. And when I think about, you know, bitching and complaining about my quote unquote problems in life, I, you are one of the people that I look at that I just like, you know, shut up, you got nothing to say. So do you want to hop on? I don't mean to call you out, but I'm just You're glad sweet. to I'm, I'm like, hi, I miss you. I'm like, I oh, I'm giving you, you some yeah, hugs. hugs. And I see Denise too. And I'm like, yeah, oh, hey, Denise. hi, Denise. No, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here, Jackie, and I'm so grateful for your work, and I'm going to start to cry, so I'm just not going to go there, but That's thank right. you. Do you want I, me to pause I, the recording it, so you can... No, it's fine. Okay. No, it's fine. Okay. Um, no, perception, I mean, I've got like two pages of stuff written down already, <clears throat> but it's true. It's facts are facts, and how am I going to experience that? And I... I feel like I put on a good show so often in my life. I mean, most of you guys don't know me, but uh, my children have a neuromuscular disease and I do all this advocacy and I do all this work and, and I feel like it's, it looks good on paper, Jackie. Yeah, <laughs> and, so. and, and I feel like, so I struggle with that and, and I, you know, the living your truth and who do I want to be and how do I want to express? And I, that, that's, I, that's why I'm here. So. Yeah, no, I so get it. And, you know, I, I so get the, it, it looks good on paper and, you know, I'm so glad you're here and you're able to just be real and say like, you know, sometimes it really sucks. I cannot imagine yeah. 
you know, like all these, like, so parents are home, you know, trying to work and they've got the kids at home. She's got the kids at home and what, both of them now are in wheelchairs, right? Both um, one partially and one fully, yes. Okay. One partially and one fully. And, yeah. you know, in wheelchairs, like, like seriously, right? <laughs> I found another friend. Actually, I'm thinking, Kristen, I should hook you two up. Um, another friend of mine from the Worcester Unity Church, she's the music director there. I think she's got like five kids, one of them with Down syndrome, and one of them is like a, a one-year-old who was born like, they basically, when the baby was born, like, you know, she's going to die and, you know, you shouldn't try to do life-sustaining measures, whatever. She's a year old now, you know, she's amazing, she's beautiful, and she's really a sick, sick baby. So she requires constant, you know, care and attention. And I'm like, she's got five freaking kids too. <laughs> One of them's really, really sick and the other has special needs. What am I bitching about? <laughs> well, it's all, yeah. It's and all right. Everybody, everybody right. has exactly. something, right? It's and that's exactly what as I Mona said. That. Like, she's having her experience. I love right? that. I wrote that down. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a brilliant, brilliant statement. And so, our job as people seeking to evolve consciously is to say, okay, this is the experience I'm having. Is this the one that I'm choosing? Because you can unchoose it at any moment. And oh, by the way, here's the other potential pitfall that you'll unchoose it and be like, whoo, that feels so much better. I promise you, it's going to be back in about six minutes. <laughs> so you have to unchoose again, and you have to unchoose again. I mean, like, just keep reminding yourself, oh, wait, no, I'm choosing a higher path. I'm choosing to feel relevant. Muna is choosing to create her business newly in her mind. And so, you know, we're all going to just keep choosing and reinventing <clears throat> our experience of this. There's no right way to do this, folks. There's no right way to do this. My commitment for all of us is that we experience it with the greatest level of um, empowerment and clarity that we can. That's all we have, is our ability to determine our own experience, internal experience. This was not on my vision board, I promise you. I like my basketball team. I miss my basketball team. <laughs> yeah, Peter? Unmuting. Yeah, the other thing to remember is hold as high a state of consciousness as you're capable of. You'll feel better and other people will feel the effect too. Yeah, other people will feel the effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the biggest, the best thing you can do for humanity right now is to maintain as high a vibe as you can. You know, loving, peaceful, centered. Um, I just keep coming back to this word equanimity, you know, kind of just a, a peaceful inner knowing that all is well, even when things look like it's fallen apart on the outside. And, you know, because this is, this is not a pretty situation, what's happening. And we, I don't know that we've seen the half of it yet. So our resilience and our ability to manage our, our inner narrative and our emotions and, and to it, the more you can quiet your inner world, the more your intuitive and inner knowing, your kind of the, 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 the level of pure knowing of wisdom will emerge in you. All, all you have to do, <laughs> all you have to do is, is quiet that, that inner angst. Anyone, and I know that's a big order. I could say, I, I could go on for an hour about how to do that, but I'm going to, I want to keep it directed at you guys. Yeah, Ruth, go ahead. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, um, go ahead. One of the things that has, has come up for me is that as I've had time for myself here, which has been a blessing, that I have cleaned off bookshelves and I've, um, I've rediscovered things that have been meaningful to me and I've realized how many tools I have in my toolbox at this ripe old age. And I ran across a two-year city yoga uh, intensive correspondence course that I took many years ago and I started to reread those things and I've cleaned off bookshelves and run across books that have inspired me over the years and I've run across books that you have written and all of the life design life mastery life transcendence things and I have so many things around me to inspire me and to bring me back to that center within which is where I started in city yoga and um and I realize those are the places that inspire my artwork that I don't have to, I don't have to copy. I can create and I, it can come from within me and it can be scribble art. 
Yeah. It can be whatever I want it to be. And I just, mm -hmm. I'm just so grateful to be in this place that I am. And yeah. I've just shut the TV off and I have, um, tuned into my inner world and um it's a blessing beautiful i love it you are so talented too ruth the more you create art the more you are doing what you came here to do uh the more you will be rising the vibratory pattern for everybody right so uh, jack yeah jack just this is roselle um Hi, can roselle. i just interject a couple of things sure go ahead um <clears throat> my one of my cats i have four cats one's just been diagnosed as diabetic so I've been kind of in quandary how to move forward with her and my, you know, after trying to, well, working on meditating and praying about it, I'm just going to try diet with her for probably several weeks to a month and then see if uh, he, she needs to go to medicine. But beyond that, it, you know, I would leave food out for the four cats all day. Now they're, now it's all got to be kind of watched and regulated and who is, who is in what dish since this, okay. this one has. Okay, that's special that's food. the cats. What about you? Uh, but anyway, so, you know, I, I am praying. I think this is a golden opportunity for mankind to make a quantum leap yeah, in our exactly consciousness. Right. Exactly right. And I think it, it's very imperative that the light beings, that we are all, all light beings working toward higher consciousness, that we be really meditating and, and you know, especially for our world, because I, I really wonder if this is the turning point. We either get, you know, mankind in general either starts to get it, or I, I don't think we have too many more generations of mankind yeah. that's going to continue. Um, and I, 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 I just like some of the others find that, you know, some days are up and down and others are more calm. <clears throat> it all seems to be pivotal, pivotal upon how I start my day often, but the, like last night I started getting really anxious and I don't know if people are familiar with the emotional freedom technique, but um, Lori Lamont had a tapping session about two weeks ago and it was all, it was you, most of them young mothers, I think with the kids home 24 by seven and it's anxious and out of control and worried and what's next. And, you know, and you just kind of tap, you just tell yourself, yeah, I, I'm anxious. Yeah. I'm worried. But I know it. I know I'm okay. I know God's in control. I know we're going to get through this. Okay, and you know it just kind of helps calm the body down, so yeah. you're not in this this turning, turning. And just like you said, if you don't work with it, it's back in six minutes, and then you're <laughs> back to that anxious, worried state again. So I think that the emotional freedom technique does help to yeah. dissipate that more solidly. But, you know, another thing that you had mentioned was feel your feelings. So many of the books that I've read for the longest times felt like, oh, just deny it. You know, if you just deny that you feel uh, fear or that you feel angry or that you're grieving, just deny it and, and try to affirm that, you know, God's in control here. Well, that those feelings just sit in your body and... Yeah. At some point, they have to come out and they have to be felt and they have to be worked through or dissipated or they're going to keep coming back. So, you know, I think it is very valuable to, figure, you know, whatever works for you. Like um, Ruth just said, there's a lot of tools that most of us know, but find something that works for you to help you feel the feelings and get past them because then the vibration does raise. And, you know, that's what we that's really our, our challenge in in this whole process of this pandemic is to awesome. try to stay in that higher level if at all possible. Awesome. Thank you, Roselle. I appreciate that. And blessings to your cat. Um, Ruth, I oh, just want to make sure that you were complete with where you were going and what you were sharing earlier. Um, I was complete in the fact that I just wanted to say the gratitude piece is really keeps me centered. Yep. That's an, another great. Centered in yes. the work that I do as an artist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to pick up on something that you said earlier, Ruth, and a little bit what um, Roselle just shared as well, and that is about this notion of conscious evolution. So Ruth was talking about her art and that, you know, maybe she's just not, not going to paint today, but she's going to doodle and see what else comes through. I, 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 and I, you've heard this from a lot of other spiritual teachers, that this is a time, it's a pivotal time in, con in, in human evolution. And my commitment, and I know it is for many of you, is that we evolve consciously. 
that you know if anything uh in terms of the the organism that humanity is that you you and i are all cells of the body of the human organism right can you can you just hold that that humanity is an organism and we are all living expressions living cells within the organism of humanity <clears throat> And if there's, there will be positives, there will be blessings that emerge from this because life is always happening for us, not to us. But the blessings that emerge from this are for each of us to evolve consciously. You know, so, you know, like Kristen, you're saying this, it's, it's, it looks good on paper, but it doesn't always feel good. Let that be your truth. Let, be conscious of that. Tell your truth. Ruth, you know, so you're, you're not painting, you're, gonna, you're going to doodle. We'll see how, what emerges through you. For me, I'm feeling irrelevant. Well, look what I did in feeling irrelevant. I created, I wrote a, you know, uh, an article. I created an infographic. I sent it out to lots of people creating these calls. We're all being used in the organism of humanity. And the more that we can be used consciously to bring forth our God self, you know, a couple of you use the expression that God's in charge here. I have a message for you. We are God. This is what God looks like. This is God expressing on earth, not like some like entity in a cloud with a beard, pulling strings saying, oh, they were bad, let's give them a pandemic. <laughs> That's not it. This is how God expresses on earth, right here, right now. This is it. How's it look? How's it going for you so far? Right? Anybody need a cigarette? So good so far? <laughs> this is it. So how, how does, you know, if God is in control, what that means is that we, are in control. We have to wake up. We have to deny ourselves any uh, option of othering. Oh, they're having that experience. They are that way. There is no they. There's me outpictured and reflected back. God as me. God as you. That person that's annoying you, it's just the person that you, it's the part in you that needs to heal. It's another part of the human organism that's showing up in your world so that you can consciously evolve. You can't consciously evolve when you're unconscious. And let's face it, folks, a lot of humanity is freaking unconscious. You know, I said, when I was talking to somebody, oh, El Gallo, it was you and I. I, I said, sometimes I feel like my work is um, preaching to the choir because the people that kind of follow me or you know, kind of hang around in my space, they're people that are pretty awake. <laughs> So if you've got like any friends that are kind of unconscious, turn them on to me because I really want to reach people that are, you know, you got like any one of you could be leading this call. Any one of you could be talking about these things with, with conscious evolution and, and, you know, being our God self. So let's spread this out. This don't, you know, I, I almost feel like this needs to be a global coming out party for those of us that are practitioners of, uh, you know, kind of new thought or mind, mind body uh, approaches to life, we need to come out. It's okay to tick off your aunt and uncle at the family reunion or, or you know, to upset your grandmother or whatever it is, you know, that person that doesn't want to hear it. Oh, are you going to talk about that energy thing again? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All right. Oh, I cracked myself up. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too. All right. Um, we've been on for about an hour. I'm, I'm kind of maybe wanting to wrap up, but I will not get off the line if there's anybody that still has a thought or a care or a concern that you would like me or any of the other coaches to address. So is there anybody that wants to jump in? Going once, going twice. All right. So did, did you all get what you came here for? A little time of community and connection and love and laughter. Okay, awesome. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you for spending this time with me. I would like to, if, if you guys are comfortable, I would just love to close with a prayer. If you guys are feeling that, imagine our collective energy together. Wouldn't that be awesome? Just send that out into the world. So if you're comfortable doing so, join in this prayer. If not, feel free to just get off the line. <laughs> it's a free world, man. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Thank you for being here. Let's just take a moment. If you're comfortable, just close your outer eyes centering yourself maybe around the heart chakra, the area around your physical heart and breathing into that area for just a moment. <sighs> Allowing any tension or worry or care or concern to just melt away. And allow yourself to just be present in this now moment, feeling the chair underneath you, the earth supporting you, the energies around you. And even though we are miles apart in many different locations, feeling the energy of each and every person and that we created on this call, feel the vibratory pattern that we are. 
And for this, we say thank you, God. Thank you that we are here as one mind, one spirit, one body, expressing ourselves through and as you. We are Godding on earth. We are the Christ expression, the Buddha made real. This is God expressing on earth. And we send this love and vibration and this care and this compassion, this peacefulness out to the world right now. So think about the people like in your first circle. Think of your family members and the, your colleagues, your close friends. Think of the people in your first circle and just visualize yourself from the heart chakra, sending this love out to those people. You know, your colleagues, your spouse, your, your daughters and sons, your grandchildren. And then moving out from there, the people in your community, maybe the people at the grocery store, the post office, your coffee shop, restaurants, people that are neighbors, but you don't see them as much. So your second circle, and just send this vibratory pattern of love and energy. And now out even further, let's send our loving compassion and care and appreciation to those that are on the front lines, the medical professionals, the uh, medical paraprofessionals, the delivery people, the grocery people, the postal people who are out there serving us in this very uncertain time. And we hold those that are business owners that have lost their businesses or needing to shutter their businesses. We hold them up knowing that they feel fear, but let's send them peace, send them love, send them the assurance that life is always unfolding for our good. And now let's just send awakening out to the whole planet. Say to yourself silently, I choose to consciously evolve right here, right now. I choose to evolve consciously. I choose to awaken. I choose to bring love, to be love, to give love. And as we send this vibration out, let us also bring it into our own heart chakra, blessing the expression of God that you are and that I am. And we say thank you, God, for this time of community and connection, solutions and solidarity, laughter and love. We are blessed and made more because we've been together. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. If any of you don't know how to reach me, you can always find me on Facebook, Jackie Woodside, and my email is Jackie at JackieWoodside.com if anybody wants to reach out to me. I want to thank my life design coaches for being on here. It was just delightful to hear you guys talking about your mission, talking about how grounding it is to be somebody living life by design, especially in uh, a time like this. So it's just so delightful to see all of you and, and for being here. So Thank you for this time together and uh, I'll catch you next time. Yeah. Bye everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.